Seasons of love. The sun has come, the mist has gone. We see in the distance our long way home. I was always yours to have. You were always mine. We have loved each other in and out of time. When the first stone looked up at the blazing sun and the first tree struggled up from the forest floor, I had always loved you more. You freed your braids, gave your hair to the breeze. It hummed like a hive of honeybees. I reached in the mast for the sweet honeycomb there. Mm, God, how I love your hair. You saw me bludgeoned by circumstance. Lost, injured, hurt by chance, I screamed to the heavens, loudly screamed, trying to change our nightmares into dreams. The sun has come, the mist has gone. We see in the distance our long way home. I was always yours to have, and you were always mine. We have loved each other in and out, in and out, in, in and, and out, 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 out of time. Latresa Rice is founder of It's Time Enterprises, a multifaceted company aimed at helping people push beyond the barriers they face in life and possess their dreams. She serves our community as an advocate specializing in conflict resolution. Latresa is a social worker, minister, motivational speaker, author, and publicist. Her story is sure to inspire all who listen. Welcome now, Latresa Rice. Our next guest is such a beautiful lady. Her mm. testimony is absolutely amazing. Um, I've had the opportunity to watch her life via social media over the past few years. We've been, she's been one of my best Facebook friends and didn't even really know it. Um, but I, I get so much inspiration from you, you. Latresa. And so I want to introduce my next guest, Latresa Rice. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I am a motivational speaker. I'm also an author. Mm -hmm. I have an LMSW, so I'm a licensed therapist as well, and an assistant director for student support services. So one hat is on, take it off, put the next hat on, right? Yes, yes, <laughs> I love it. Listen, we have to be multifaceted. Yes. And one of the things we're gonna talk about today, I think will be appropriate for the times that we're in okay. as a nation and the world in general is how are we navigating change when our life has suddenly took a turn that we one didn't expect, mm -hmm. two didn't want, absolutely, and need to trust God with how to move forward in faith from it. Um, and so your life has really, you know, been a blessing to me. When when we were, you. you know, watching, we we were praying with you and for you. Yeah. We, it was a tribe of us praying for you. I'm so grateful. And um, and you just missed one of the tribe members, the lady before you. <laughs> we, that was part of the group that we were interceding Amen. for you just because um, we love you, even though we didn't know you. Aww. And so thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. So, yeah, you know, you're a public speaker. You're a motivational speaker. You wear a lot of hats. And so I'm going to let you take it away. Talk to us about how do we move forward when life no longer looks like what we dreamed for? My God, the only way to really move forward is to trust God. Life hits us with so many challenges. And a lot of times as people of God, we expect everything to be roses. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a child of the most high God. Certainly nothing will happen to me in this time, in this era, especially dealing with COVID-19, it hit everyone. In the beginning of the year, my grandmother was ill, and so I was dealing with my grandmother, and then in, in February, she made her transition to be with the Lord. My grandmother is, she was one of my number one cheerleaders. I mean, 
amazing woman. My mother died of AIDS when I was seven, mm. and my grandmother raised myself, my brother, my sister, and she has been a pillar in my life for years. And so that was such a traumatic loss for me. And roughly about a month later, I lost my husband. We were married for only five months. Five months. We met on Facebook, through Facebook Messenger. It was an amazing courtship. And in the grieving process, the mind is powerful. The mind will take you back to a place where you're happiest. Mm -hmm. And so in the beginning, when we after we got married last year, October 19th of 2019. Awesome. Woo! Congratulations. How sweet to say. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> and your wedding pictures were beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. It was so much. That wedding, I was so happy because the thing was Caesar in Wonderland. I, I love Aww. things. I, listen, <laughs> I love it. I love I love creativity. Oh. My goodness and so I remember that day I remember all the different struggles of the day but I remember all the joy of that day as well mm -hmm. and I'm just so I'm grateful mm -hmm. I'm grateful I'm hurt by the loss uh, my husband was an amazing musician mm -hmm. he was a great guy I mean the love was amazing one of my prayers to God was that God will send a husband who will love me as Christ loved the church and give himself for me we can see those behaviors before marriage. Yes, we can. And a lot of times we're not looking for it because we don't think about what does it mean for a husband to love you as Christ loved the church? But well, we have to think about how does Christ love the church? Mm -hmm. Well, Christ protects the church. You know, Christ gives himself for the church. You know, there, there are things that he does. He provides for the church. Mm -hmm. And so when you see those different qualities, then this is a man of God that you can submit to. You know, mm -hmm. it's, you have to make sure that, for me, that was important, especially mm -hmm. because of my faith and who I am mm -hmm. in God. I'm an elder at Spirit and Truth Christian Ministries. Amen. My husband was a minister and elder as well. He was an amazing musician. Yes, he was. He loved to play. Mm -hmm. When I told him that I wrote a song for our wedding mm -hmm. for him, and I, I walked down the aisle to you an You better do song. it. Woo <laughs> your boo. Woo your boo. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It was called Unfolding Love. And mm. I'm planning to still release that. I, I'm very creative. I hear song tunes and I'll write the lyrics down to the different songs that the Lord places in my spirit. And as I uh, was thinking about our relationship, I thought about how our love was just continuing to unfold. And so that's where unfolding love came from. It started out a little weird because I don't know this guy. We had we did not have any other mutual friends other than one person who I personally did not know. Wow. He knew the one person. I did not. So wow. when he slid in my DMs. You know, I said, well, who is this guy? But the first thing he sent was a wave. I don't respond to waves. Me neither. Because cause, <laughs> cause guys who wave are weird. <sighs> and like, what am I supposed to say to that? I don't respond. Because for me, I love bold men. Okay. Go after what you want. Yes. But, you like me, tell twice. me. He went after. <laughs> right. Woo. Oh, my goodness. When he went to choose the different disciples, he went after them. You go after what you want. Mm -hmm. And so I said, I'm not responding to that. But if he sends an actual message, then I'll respond. Yeah. So then he sent the message, and he was like, you know, hi. You know, I just think you're absolutely beautiful. I love your smile. I want to know if I can get the opportunity to get to know the person behind the smile. So I'm like, who is this guy? So that made me go to his, you know, go to his page. Start researching. My preliminary <laughs> research. <laughs> Let me see. Mary, kids. And all. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Listen, make sure you don't have a double life. Yeah, you'll see what I'm saying check you know mm -hmm. and from there we talked he called me through video on messenger and when he called me through video on messenger I determined that I was going to make sure I was me in the natural mm -hmm. I had just taken my braids down mm -hmm. you know I washed my hair and when that phone rang I was actually pressing it out mm -hmm. <laughs> and he was like uh you want me to call you back Said, no, no, you actually get to know the woman behind the smile. This is she. Yeah. <laughs> Love me. <laughs> Love me. Mm -hmm. And we continue to talk and we talk for hours. Mm -hmm. And so that continued for another three weeks. Mm -hmm. And I asked him the question. I said, um, you know, we talk every day. Mm -hmm. Are we dating or courting? And so he said, well, we're dating. I haven't flown up there because he lived in Columbia, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. I lived in Detroit, Michigan. 
He said, I haven't come up there yet to take you on a date, so we're, we're just dating. I said, okay. Well, since we're just dating, you can call me on Mondays and Wednesdays. Tuesdays are reserved for us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so he said, wait, wait, wait. I said, because you're calling me every day, which causes me, I recognize I'm a woman. You're causing me to think that something is going on that's not, and I need to be available to talk to other people. That's what dating in, implies. Yeah. We're getting to know people. We don't know if we want to court you for marriage. We're just simply saying hello and getting to yeah. know you. So if that's all we're doing here, mm-hmm. then you can only call me on these two days. Mm-hmm. He said, oh, no, well, we're courting. <laughs> Let me change it. Let me switch it up. <laughs> Let me switch it up. Mm-hmm. And then the rest is history from mm-hmm. there. Uh, this year, when COVID-19 hit, again, my husband, he contracted COVID-19 in uh, March of this year. Mm-hmm. And in March of this year, he, after he received, contracted the virus, I also dealt with that virus. But we, I was not able to get the test done at that time. Mm-hmm. He didn't, he couldn't get it done until he went into the hospital. Mm-hmm. But he was sick with that virus for twelve days. When he went into the hospital, I was not able to go and be with him. So he had to walk that walk alone in the mm-hmm. in the hospital, which was hard. Yeah. But I, I thank God for his doctor, his doctor, because his phone came up missing in the hospital. And then she would go to his room with her phone and allow him to video chat with me Wow! on her, on her phone, which was amazing. Even before they put him on the respirator, she allowed him to video chat with me mm-hmm. and he asked me to pray with him. And mm-hmm. so we we prayed and he said, you know, what? I'm at peace. Really? And I'm like, well, what does that mean? He said, no, I'm just no longer, I'm not nervous anymore about the ventilator. Wow. I never thought that we he didn't was put that together. To be here. Yeah. But before he even went to the hospital, he said, babe, I need to, I need to talk to you. I have not been this sick. I said, well, what do you mean? We praying you, you're going to be fine. He was like, no, I, I just want to tell you, I apologize for everything. And I want you to know that I love you mm. no matter what. Wow. And in case I don't make it through this, know that I love you with every fiber of my being. I said, you're going to make it through this. Mm-hmm. So when that doctor called me and was like, he's gone, I just lost it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm like, wait, she, you got to be kidding me. Because in my mind, he was coming back through that front door. Mm-hmm. I had to get to the place of he's not coming back through that door because if I stayed there, if you stay in that traumatic experience, you would lose your life too. A lot of times we hold on to people who God has freed Mm -hmm. and in holding on to those people and not allowing them to, you know, not allowing yourself to be free, you cause yourself more harm and you Mm -hmm. don't accomplish the mission that God has for you. A lot of times we go through, not just for ourselves, Mm -hmm. but because God has a greater plan, there's somebody else that needs to know how to make it out. And so I took the mindset of, okay, God, if you have me going through this, I just lost two major people in my life, two major pillars in my life. Mm -hmm. And if I'm going through this, there has to be a reason. Lord, I need you to tell me why. What is going on? From someone, I, I, I haven't been in any other relationships. No, Lord, I kept myself for 12 years. But Jesus, what? I kept what is, myself for 12 what is, years. So, and, then, and then he go what check about his eyes. Later, <laughs> listen. What is going on? Like Job. Like Sound, Job. Yeah. And I, I call this a Job experience mm-hmm. because I went through so much trauma that my mind, when everything happened, took me back to a place, and this is what my doctor told me, the mind took me back to a place where I was happiest. And that's when we were, uh, right after the wedding, we were talking about children, and he wanted to have two children. I'm like, yeah. He said, we want to get started right away. I said, wait, let's wait a year. We not, mm-hmm. Let's make let's sure. Let's get to know each other. <laughs> let's just make sure everything's in position yeah, yeah. so that when they get here, because again, we need to prepare for what we desire. So when they get here, we're, we're solid, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And he's like, no, we're having now. And I'm just... I was just in shock. And so after dealing with all of that trauma, mm-hmm. what the body did, is my doctor said I experienced what was called a hysterical pregnancy. Okay. And so the mind basically sent messages to the body. 
we're pregnant. Yeah, it's a physiological response. Yes. Yeah. Even though I was not, I kept taking pregnancy tests. They all were showing up negative. Mm -hmm. But every week I'm getting larger. My stomach is getting larger and it's growing. And I'm like, I'm feeling movement. And I'm going to the doctors. Mm -hmm. And different doctors are saying, but you're not pregnant. I, we don't know what's going on. You're, you're not pregnant. It has to be related to the trauma. Mm -hmm. And so I decided, you know what? This is, this is a lot. Yeah. Let me make sure I get my own therapist. Yeah. I am a therapist, but a lot of times therapists mm -hmm. also need therapy. Every doctor needs a doctor. Come on. Mm -hmm. You can't just, you know, counsel yourself. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. how we do this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. got my own therapist, started doing devotionals. I did devotionals every day, and I did devotionals related to the mind. Mm -hmm. I did some of Joyce Meyer's devotionals on there, and there were some anxiety devotionals, depression-related devotionals, because I was extremely depressed. Mm -hmm. And in the process of my healing, my healing journey to wholeness is what I called it. Awesome. Because I kept declaring that I'm coming out of this thing, mm -hmm. and I'm coming out with the spoils. I, I don't care that it's hard right now. Mm -hmm. I am a child of the Most High God. I don't have to stay here. Mm -hmm. A lot of times things can feel so painful and so tragic and so so difficult that we think that this is it. Mm -hmm. But every day that you wake up and you're still breathing, you have another opportunity to give the enemy a black eye. <laughs> you know? yes. so, so my my thinking was, how do I deal with the trauma and, and deal with my emotions? Because sometimes we try and hide it all, and sometimes we don't allow ourselves to grieve like we should. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, you slow up your process. Yeah. And so I dealt with all the all the nights of crying and uh, just screaming out and, and praying to the Lord and just being real before God. Because sometimes people think that they can't tell God exactly how you feel. You already know. Yeah. If you're angry, say you're angry. They say you're angry. He wants you to come to him in your brokenness. So if you had, if you were able to talk to our entire Seeds of Love family. Yes. Um, you know, it's over the years, we've probably built a following of several hundred people. Okay. I know that there's people who's watching us that have gone through severe grief and loss. Um, maybe grieving the loss of a job or a loss of a home. Because remember, this pandemic is multi-systemic. It's not just a health crisis. It's an employment crisis. Absolutely. It's a mental health uh, crisis for a lot of people. And so what could you say? Because you've overcome, and you're, even though you're still in the process mm -hmm. of it, you are thriving in the midst you. of grieving. You're thriving. You know, it, it, you kind of remind me of the scripture that says, though he slay me, yet, yet will, will I, I trust, trust him. him. Come on. And that's what your life has modeled. Yeah. For me, this since 2020, like I said, I've been watching your life for a couple of years. And, and this year you came in my purview, like pay attention to her, pray for her, intercede for her. Ooh, thank God for you. <laughs> and, amen. Me and my friends, we were, we were, we were praying, we were praying for you. And so um, I think your perspective is unique in that you, un you know, the Bible says that we have not a high priest that cannot be touched mm -hmm. with the feeling of our infirmities, meaning that everything that hurts us, Jesus has felt. Absolutely. Jesus knows all about our troubles, Absolutely. all about our struggles. But we understand a little piece of it, and certainly you do as well. So take the last few minutes. I want you to do a few things, tell people how they can find you, connect with you, um, any special events you might have coming up in the next year or so, okay. and a word of encouragement. Perfect. You may be going through an extremely traumatic time, and that pain feels unreal. You find yourself not, in want, not wanting to get out of the bed. You're struggling to just get dressed. And guess what? It is part of your process. It is okay, but you cannot stay there. And so if you're experiencing those things, do the small step. For me, it was just move the sheet over. Do something. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be just, just put one foot out of the bed for mm -hmm. a moment. Take your time and deal with the grief and loss, but know that God loves you. Know that he would not put more on you than you can bear. But with that statement means that you can't, you're not bearing it alone. What If you are dealing with some extreme, immense pain, God is dealing with that with you. He's the one carrying you through and it is okay. A lot of times people may tell you, okay, it's over. You need to move from there. This is part of your process. So whatever you need to do in this process, I will say declare that you're coming out. 
because a lot of times our actions flow in the direction of our words. Mm -hmm. And so what you continuously speak, I'm coming out of this thing. I, I will be healed. I will be whole. It will manifest. Mm -hmm. Just like the mind is extremely powerful in how it deals with your body, it is also extremely powerful in how it will help you deal with your emotions and your walk with Christ. And so I encourage you to post, look at the light. In the midst of darkness, there is always light present. I don't care if it's a small glimmer. Many of you are probably plugging up your cell phone. That charger hat may have a little light on it. And if your room is extremely dark, you still see that light. Look for the, even a small glimmer of light and focus on the light. You have to focus on what is uh, present to draw you out of it. And so for me, I focus on the light. I focus on all the good memories, focus on the good memories, deal with the negative stuff as well. You got to deal with the whole thing so that you can fully heal and move forward. And so I just really encourage you. You are a victor. The mere fact that you are still breathing today indicates that you have already overcome immense challenges over the past. Even being born was, an, was a challenge because of the way the body is set up. And you made it through. You are making it through. You will come through. I believe that God is going to bless you with an abundance. There's double for your trouble. Just trust and believe in God and make sure that you are listening to different devotionals. Listen to his word. You know, we are healed by the word. And so it's important to eat as much of that word as you possibly can, even in, even when you don't feel like it. There were times in which I didn't feel like talking to God. I didn't mm -hmm. I didn't feel like reading the scriptures. And, and when I didn't feel like it, I just played it. Let it play. Mm -hmm. But don't beat yourself up for your process, because mm -hmm. sometimes people can be hard, especially if they're not dealing with what you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. They will tell you that's too much. You're doing too much. It's time for you to just move on. Just oh, why, why are you crying? You've been crying for the past week. Listen, baby, this this pain is real. I'm trying to get through this process. I'm in a fight of my life and you may be in the fight of your life, but ultimately you win. Yes, I have an event coming up. For women who desire to be married, uh, August 28th of 2021 is called Preparation is Key. You can find me at latresarice.com. That event is going to share some of the lessons learned in the process of dating and courting and some of the lessons learned in marriage. Just want to make sure that you are prepared for what you desire. It's based on the book of Esther. Mm -hmm. Esther took 12 months to prepare for her king. Mm -hmm. And so I want to make sure that you're prepared. I'm also writing the book Hurt But Grateful, which is describing uh, my husband and our experiences with COVID-19, the lessons I've learned in the process and how I walked through tragedy and overcame many of the things. It's still a process. There are still things that I'm still overcoming. But guess what? Just like you are a warrior and you will overcome, I'm overcoming. And I'm praying with you and I believe God for your victory. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Latricia. Seasons of Love family, wasn't she amazing? <laughs> I can't hear you clapping, but was <laughs> <laughs> right? She was so good. Thank you for your sharing so transparently about your journey thus far. I know this isn't the end, and this certainly will not be the last that we will see of you. I'm excited about your future. Thank you. And there is glory after this. Yeah. Oh. If I could turn all the lights down, I would. Some things, some things don't need distractions. If I could stop time, I would. Some things, some things don't need distractions. I 
Honeycomb sugar cane in a bag. I don't know what any other sweeter than this. Sweeter than you. You. I move to tears when I look into your face. I ain't never seen such grace. The way you handle me makes this easier to breathe. You make this life sweet, my soul. Guys, 
for you.